Oh no, shit, I better, I better put that away. <laughs> oh no, I'm just fucking with you guys. Look, hey, hey guys, welcome back, welcome back to the channel. Let's get this camera square, if I can. Uh, I'm back from Bali, guys. Some of you may have seen that I, I put up a video recently about the legend. I called him a legend anyway. His name is Bernie Kosar. He's a quarterback uh, for the Cleveland Browns. Then he got let go at age 29, I believe, and went to the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, I can't exactly remember how the story ended, but you guys are going to know because you're about to watch my reaction. Now, I was forced, well not forced, but my, my, <laughs> look guys, yesterday was a bad day. I drove back from Darwin to Alice Springs after my trip away to, out to uh, Bali. I was, I was so tired. I was so extremely tired. I was so extremely depressed <laughs> about coming home. Um, not for the fact that I could see my daughter and, and you know, crack on to some more YouTube videos, but for the fact that I have to go back to work, man. I don't enjoy my job. But anyways, look, I was so tired. I hadn't slept in like 30 hours. And lo and behold, I um, uploaded this video that you're about to see. And someone commented that I'd looked at my phone whilst doing the reaction. Now, unbeknownst to me, apparently I missed the best part. So, look, I'm, I'm not going to... My, my channel is all about being as real and open and honest as possible. That day, that day, I had to check my phone. I, ha I had to, you know. I'd, I'd been getting messages from uh, my ex. Um, <laughs> to be honest, me even smiling and t continuing with the reaction after reading what I did read is a credit to me, I believe. But anyways... Yesterday, uh, there were some comments saying, you missed the best part, why the fuck were you looking at your phone? Um, and then I put up another video after that, you know, I took, the, I took the criticism, I took the dislikes, I was like, sweet, whatever, I'm going to keep it up there. And uh, the next video, the same guy said, oh, I hope he doesn't look at his phone, I hope he doesn't ruin this reaction. Um, you know, we're giving you, we're giving you so much of our time, it's, it's disrespectful for you to have looked at your phone whilst doing a reaction. And... I not only replied to him in my tired as fuck state, I said, shut the fuck up. If you want to say anything, hit me up on Instagram. I told him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> then five minutes later, I thought, no, nah, I can't do that. Deleted my comment and deleted that Bernie Kosar video. So this video, this clip is going to be an intro clip to the Bernie Kosar video. I haven't changed nothing. You can watch it. Enjoy it, hopefully. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed him. I love stories like that. I love... You know, I, I love guys that aren't superstars, but in their hometown or, or, you know, with their particular story in football, they are considered a legend and a hero. And so that's why I said uh, Bernie Kosa, NFL legend for the Cleveland Browns. Now, I hope you enjoy this video. I apologize. I'm not going to watch it back because once I've watched my video, once I've done the video, once I edit it and watch it again, then I post it, I never watch it again because it's just too much. The third time's just too much. So I'm not going to watch it. I don't know the exact part that I did look at my phone, but look guys, don't give me shit. Please hit that like button if you do like it. If you don't like it and you, 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 you think I'm disrespectful for looking at my phone, I apologize. I sincerely do. And that guy that I told to shut the fuck up, he messaged me on Instagram and uh, we, had it, <laughs> we had it out at each other. Oh my god, I've never done that before, but it was, it felt good for me because I was so tired and I was just like, man, I'm, I'm just going to fucking let, 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 let rip here. And that's what I did. But this morning, he came back to me and he said, look, I apologize. And I said, mate, I apologize too, because I'd slept 14 hours last night, guys. So I hope you enjoy the video. I'm here back in Alice Springs. There's plenty more content to come. I've probably got like 13 videos saved, um, ready to publish now, so I'm going to put up two a day as per usual. I really hope you enjoy. This is Bernie Kosar, my reaction to him. Regardless of, of what the reaction looks like, I came out of that really respecting him. I like him as a player and a person, and um, you know, if I do make it to Cleveland, hopefully I can meet the guy. So enjoy. Once again, I'm sorry, and I'll tell you what, I will make it, I, I don't, and the thing that pissed me off the most is the fact that I don't think I've ever, ever looked at my phone for an extended period of time whilst doing a reaction before, and over 300 reactions, guys. So that was the first time someone called me out for it, and you know what, I will never do it again. So enjoy, have a great day. This is the legend Bernie Kosar, my reaction. Peace out, everybody. All right, everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today's video... We're going to look at a guy, Bernie Kosar. 
and I have no idea why. But I have been recommended him multiple times. It's a name that's just come to my head. I've just been sitting here doing a few rugby reactions. And you know what? The next one that's on my mind is Bernie Kosar. And uh, there's two interviews. Or there's two videos that I want to watch. Bernie's Journey and Bernie Kosar Interview. So the first one we're going to go is Bernie's Journey. <laughs> and uh, that rhymes. So let's get into it. The quicker you here. The faster you go, that's why where I come from, the only thing we know is oh. 29 years before LeBron James returned to his roots, another local legend announced he too was coming back to Northeast Ohio. It's a question I think of me. Look at the singlet. Just wanting to go home. And just like James, Bernie Kosar also won it all in Miami. Quarterback at the U. And like LeBron, Kozar then chose to play in Cleveland for the Browns, the team of his blue collar boyhood. It just felt right to me, and I felt like my family needed help. I needed to be around them. They needed, I thought, a sense of identity and, and self esteem. Kozar goes back to throw. Kozar gave Browns fans hope. Pass is caught for a touchdown! He was one of them, a hometown hero. King of Cleveland. His accuracy, football IQ, and competitive fire ignited the Browns. Purdy is into the end zone for a touchdown! With Kozar at the controls, three times Cleveland reached the AFC Championship game. Kozar had it to him and he was wide open. And three times were denied by Denver. Derailed by the drive and foiled by the fumble, the Browns never did reach the promised land. He hasn't thrown a pass here for two decades. Are we all Browns fans? Yet an endless stream of adoring subjects envelops King Bernie. I love you. Emotion <laughs> and gratitude. Still going. Very nice. That belief in myself. That's awesome. That they have, that kind of love that they have of me, I think is something that I, I don't take for granted. You know, and maybe as I get older, I enjoy it more. I'm staring at that pretty shirt of yours. <laughs> he wanted to come home. Like that other superstar that decided to come home. It's where it's at, home. That's why I think people love him. It's because he hasn't forgotten where he's from. Kozar has even built a bridge to current Browns quarterback and local native Brian Hoyer. He and I have developed a, a great relationship. He calls me uh, on a weekly basis. and. For me, it's kind of surreal. That's the guy. I, I wonder how he's with. how he's uh, going with Baker Mayfield. In my backyard, and now he's telling me, "You know, you're playing great. You're doing great. I'm rooting for you." Your decision to really insist on playing in your hometown. How do you think that played out? I thought it would be easier because it's my hometown. It ended up actually being harder because the pressure. Everybody who you ever met is going to come up to you. Every family member you ever had is going to try to track you down. People associate Bernie with money, and then here comes the greed. And I think that's why people try to take advantage of him. <laughs> Kozar's friend, Enzo Madalena, says that because he's so approachable and so trusting, that Kozar has been viewed as a target by those looking for an easy mark. He was just one of those victims that I think his, kind, his kindness sometimes gotten mistaken for weakness. Thanks again, man. In 2009, Kozar declared... That looks like an amazing jacket that guy's got. That orange one. That you've had I want one. $300 million dollars and you've had zero. Yep. How is that possible? I'm really good at making it. Good at spending it. Great at giving it away. <laughs> I'm not going to start over again being the bank of Bernie. Okay? Where everybody's on a scholarship. I, you know, I've done that. I don't feel obligated to have to, you know, give it all away again and hear every sob story, 80% which aren't true. When he announced his homecoming, LeBron James said he was returning to where he cried, where he bled, to somewhere that holds a special place in his heart. And now he's at the Lakers. What did he make you think about? Did he steal my speech? <laughs> It sounds like what I said 30 years ago. <laughs> Truthfully, not to be over dramatic or emotional, but it brings a tear to your eye. I mean, it was beautifully written, it was beautifully said. 
knowing Northeastern Ohioans the way you do, do you think they'll give him the space that he needs? No chance. Zero chance. No. <laughs> no. No. I'm not saying he can't do it because he's the best, but they're not going to give him space. They're going to crush him with with. A... Right. We've got to hear about that money situation. I don't know if that's the reason why someone wants me to look at him or not, but... Former American football quarterback, played for the Browns from 85 to 93, then finished his career with the Cowboys and Dolphins. With the Cowboys, he won Super Bowl 43. No, 20, 33, 30, 30, 28? <laughs> 28, beating the Buffalo Bills. He has even been referenced in several books. Played, foot, played uh, college football at the University of Miami. And I want to know, post-retirement, since retiring from football in the 96 season, he's been involved in several ventures. There has been talk of Kosar leading the, taking the head coaching job at the University of Miami. He acknowledged that he considered taking the job before it was ultimately, ultimately offered to Randy Shannon. In 2001, Kosar purchased the Florida Panthers NHL team, along with pharmaceutical businessman Alan Cohen. Holy shit. Kosar also purchased a minority share in the Arena Football League's Las Vegas Gladiators in 2007 and announced that the team would move to Cleveland and play under the name Cleveland Gladiators. On October 16th, 2007, he was named the team president and CEO of the franchise. Gladiators finished the 2008 regular season 9-7, and seven, earning them a playoff berth. On October 17th, 2009, he was hired as a consultant for the Cleveland Browns. Following the 09 recession, Kosar and his businesses declared bankruptcy on June 19th, 2009. Although the initial bankruptcy filing was a Chapter 11 restructuring, the US Bankruptcy Court in Fort Lauderdale ordered the proceeding changed to a Chapter 7 liquidation, which is process of liquidation. Chapter 11 is... what? Under the reconstruction, Kosar's filing proposed protection, protecting his NFL pension. It is unclear at the time if he was able to retain the pension. What do you get for a pension? In September 2010, the trustees of Auburn Township indicated that the township was considering purchasing the land in, for, in foreclosure. Kosar has lent his name to the Kosar's wood-fired grill at the Hard Rock Northfield Park, which opened in December 2013. Kosar continues to deal with lingering effects of several concussions he sustained during his playing career and is currently in a treatment program to alleviate his symptoms. The experimental treatment has been very helpful for Kosar to the point where he has openly promoted the treatment in the hopes of others in the hopes of helping other players who may have developed the same symptoms. Kosar's symptoms have included insomnia, slurred speech and a rigging in his head, some present for more than a decade. And there's a little bit, there's a little bit more there. Fucking hell, man. Six foot five. Fuck, he's tall. They're all tall, eh? Anyways, guys, this is the, this is the video I really wanted to watch. Bernie Kosar interview. I know a little bit of history now. Let's do it. Boomer, we're doing a piece about slow quarterbacks. <laughs> Who's the slowest you ever saw? Bernie Kosar. What? He's done. Oh, Bernie. <laughs> okay, I didn't hear about that before. So he was, uh, he wasn't the, he wasn't the fastest. He wasn't the fastest quarterback of all time, but it's okay. Go, sir. Athleticism was not his long suit. Uh, he was like six foot six, 225 pounds. He looked like a praying mantis out there. I mean, he was like all over the place. Uh, I'm telling you, I would stand on the sideline. He would stand in this cockeyed stance. He had the worst stance. He looked like a <laughs> duckling. And I'd be going, how is this guy, how does he move? I always thought the guy was going to fall down uh, in his back pedal as he, as he came away from center. He always looked like he was one step away from losing. <laughs> well, he did so there. <coughs> if the NFL... Holy shit, he is tall. Points, wow. Kozar wouldn't have gotten any. No, he got a touchdown. I want to read you something. Well Jim done. Jim Murray used to write for the LA Times. He described you this way. Kozar doesn't throw the ball. He just lets go of it like a guy losing a bar of soap in the shower. It looks more like a complicated fumble than a pass. 
Is that a fair description? Well, I'm not sure if it's fair, but again, I, I'm not mechan. I wasn't mechanically, uh, again, the best quarterback. But in the heat of the battle, he can't be thinking about mechanics. The ball's just got to come out the way it naturally comes out. If you believe the quarterback is a result-oriented position in a result-oriented world, if you don't look great doing it, does it really matter if the throw's good and the throw's there and the throw's on time and it gets completed? No. Of course not. It's hard to argue with a guy who once threw 308 consecutive passes without a single interception. Kosar might wow. not have looked like a natural, but like he says, does it really matter? Kosar in trouble. Rolling right. Throws on the run. covered a, a celebrity uh, golf tournament that Jim Kelly put on and he had uh, a competition with a bunch of quarterbacks and I think you were all trying to throw through a tire. Yeah. Nobody could throw through the tire. You took it, put it right through. Well, again, that's why I feel blessed early in my career for coaches not switching my style. Early in his career, there wasn't much reason to switch his style. As a 19-year-old freshman, Kozar led the University of Miami to its first national championship. Even then, he was the master of the unorthodox, leaving sunny South Florida two years early and manipulating the NFL draft so he could go home to play in Cleveland. If you go back to the 1980s, and you look at the city of Cleveland, $100 million in debt, one of the highest crime rates in the United States. The Cayuga River is on fire. Cayuga. Cuyahoga. <laughs> so all these bad things are happening, and yet that's where you decide you want to play. You grow up a Browns fan. You grow up in northeastern Ohio. Uh, you grow up in Municipal Stadium. And I forgot to say, Municipal Stadium is one of the biggest crap holes in the in NFL history. It depends on your perspective <laughs> as to where you're, how you're looking at it. Now, I personally like the green spray painted mud that they called grass. I always try to take a negative and turn it into a positive. I don't like to dwell on the bad things and I don't like to feel sorry for myself. I don't like excuses for failure. Bernie made a career out of turning negatives into positives. He definitely like spins it out the he side of his... Saw the That's... Kozar as an easy target to yeah. blitz. <laughs> Kozar saw I guess it means he can get it around people. As an easy target to pick apart. When they were blitzing, instead of playing it safe, that was my chance to go for a home run and score a touchdown. So when I saw the all-out blitz coming, no matter when it was, where it was, I was taking a shot. Kozar's wacky throwing motion actually threw off defenses trying to figure out where the ball was going. Nobody in the history of football looked so far opposite of where the ball was going. I was at Houston Oilers. Yeah, coaching the game. that's right. He's looking that way. It's going to come out that way. You know how people say, watch the quarterback? Do that's great, man. Watch Bernie. If I was Bernie's that's wife, great. I'd be worried. Because he could be looking one way and doing something else. Yeah. The ball's coming out of his hands, and I'm saying, no, Bernie, no, Bernie. Great throw, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought he'd throw That's ball exactly ball. what you'd think. Don't throw it that way. Don't throw that. Oh, he's not throwing it that way. That's it's okay. That's really the reason that he was so very effective. <laughs> Kozar became the first quarterback to lead his team to the playoffs in each of his first five seasons since Otto Graham did it in the 1950s. Talk about turning negatives into positives. By the late 80s, Bang off the left. was hotter than South Beach. And Truck him up was the toast of his hometown. He was the typical guy that the city would fall in love with. Not John Elway, not a great athlete, but smart, hardworking, courageous, uh, maximizing his ability. There were songs on the radio, Bernie, Bernie, How You Can Throw, Bernie, Bernie, Super Bowl. Poems were being sent into the papers. The city went nuts. The only thing that drove Cleveland more You would have loved him, eh? I would have. ...was the sight of John Elway. Three times the Browns met the Broncos in the AFC Championship game. All three times the Broncos prevailed. 
And while we always remember Elway's last-minute drive and Ernest Biner's last-second fumble, it's easy to forget that Bernie had put his team in position to win. I love that throw, man. I really you do. can't suffer tragic defeat Sick. unless you reach the doorstep of victory. To me, he's Charlie Brown. And he, the football always gets pulled away by Lucy just as he's about to kick it. You know, that's his lot in life. And he doesn't get the Elway ending. He gets the Bernie Kosar ending. And, you know, he gets to be happy with that. But good grief. Kosar kept trying to write a different ending often to the chagrin of his own coaches. Now, I have some principles that I believe in offensively that sometimes butted heads with coaches. I believe in offensive offense. And that may seem stupid, you know, but when you sometimes have defensive coaches who play defensive offense, it makes, starts making more sense. It never made sense to Bill Belichick, the defensive guru. Look at him! Cleveland's head coach in 91. Holy fuck! <laughs> he was new to offense back then. And He's got brown hair. We both always had a uh, mutual respect for each other. We just had different philosophies at the time as to how to be productive. Can you remember your last pass as a Cleveland Brown? Yeah, pretty vividly. We were playing Denver, ironically, and they had two very aggressive safeties. So these guys tended to squat and sit. And I told Michael Jackson, I kind of drew it in, the, in our Steve mind. Atwater, I've done that. down about eight, 16 yards. Now you were doing this in the huddle. In the huddle, kind of, yeah. Went about 16 yards, and then cut in like a square end, and I'll pump it, and then just run right past him. Belichick wasn't the kind of coach who wanted his quarterback drawing up plays in the mud, even when they worked exactly as planned. that ironic that it you know turned out being my last pass you know as a brown in cleveland stadium but again I, I don't look at it i never looked at it as being insubordinate and it wasn't with a malicious intent but belichick had seen enough <laughs> see ya with his team in first place he cut his starting quarterback in the middle of the season bill belichick eh? you were 29 years old right yeah, you were still at your peak and if i remember the reason said that you had diminished skills well, now, hey, everyone, you know, who's entitled to their own opinion. I, you know, unfortunately, that been your opinion. well, I didn't think so, but I mean, I'm biased. <laughs> yeah, I like me. Um, what happened, happened. And it was a, one of the lowest points in my life. There's no question about it. Because that was my team. That was where I wanted to play. That's where I wanted to finish. In Cleveland, the feeling was mutual. The city mourned the departure of Bernie and moaned about Belichick. A local station even promised to air every Cowboy game for the rest of the season <laughs> because Dallas immediately signed Kozar to fill in for the injured Troy Aikman. I was in Dallas the week he got whacked in Cleveland and he shows up in Dallas on a Thursday morning and Norv Turner is assigned by Jimmy Johnson and I quote, get this guy ready to play, I don't care what you have to do. Bernie just studied his rear end off, came in, won the game 20 to 15. Ozark rolls out right, pumps it once, throws it in the end zone, and over check he's got That's what I'm talking about. People were saying how great you played. God, they were so good that I, I think I had one of the longest passes in Cowboy history. I think it threw it from me to you to Emmett, and Emmett ran 85 with it. Ozark to throw short to catch made by Smith at the 20, spins across the 25 and brings it down. See ya. Emmett and the Cowboys Emmett might Smith. have made it look easy. I love Emmett Smith. There's nothing simple about what Bernie did that day. He won an NFL game after basically having about 36 hours to take a playbook in and totally That's digest. insane. One of the greatest things I think I've ever seen. How did he do that? I remember after the game, North Turner said, you know, I write a book on my life in football and this is going to be the longest chapter. <laughs> The longest chapter of Kozar's life in football wasn't quite over. In the NFC Championship game against the 49ers, Aikman was again forced to leave with a concussion. And Aikman is woozy, walking around holding his head. Bernie would have one more chance to win a championship game and help lead a team to the Super Bowl. Let's go, Bernie. Oh, what a catch! It was amazing. Again. 
It was classic Kozar. He turned the biggest negative of his career into the biggest positive. What a difference, what a, difference a couple months makes, huh? Isn't that amazing? He finished his career backing up Dan Marino in Miami and doing what he'd always done, finding unorthodox ways to win football games. One of the most interesting plays in NFL history is one that you are credited with being the architect, and that's the Dan Marino stop. Yeah. 30 seconds to go. I believe Marino is saying I'm going to spike it. Marino takes the snap from center. He's looking. He throws it. was something that me and Gary Danson came up with back in the mid 80s and just kind of carried with me. This goes back to again, what are your gifts that God's give you and what are your limitations? What you, could you do? What can't you do? And I had to take advantage mentally of every situation that I could take advantage of because I couldn't run like Donovan McNabb could run right now. Find a way, somehow, some way, find a way to get it done. That's kind of the way I, I looked at playing quarterback. Like my motion, albeit a little unorthodox, the results are what I thought mattered. Exactly. However, whatever, just get it done. The clock play was the perfect finale for a player whose value couldn't be measured by a stopwatch, proving once more that appearances can be deceiving. Just ask the guy who drafted Bernie Kosar. You know what, I don't know what his 40 time was. I don't want to know what his 40 time I didn't want to know what his 40 time was then. Uh, Gil Brandt said he knew one time. I said, don't tell me. I'm sure it was slow, but um, he won a lot of football games. Hmm. I really enjoyed that. So that was my look at Bernie Kosar. And it will most likely be my only look. But now I know who he is. He's a legend. He really is. He's, he's, he's cool. He's cool, he had an interesting style, get it done, an offensive style of offense, which is what I, I really like, and uh, yeah, that was fun. So if you have liked this video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, do that too, and I'll see you guys back here for another one very soon. I don't know what, I don't know when, I don't know where, I don't know who, I don't know how! But I'll be back, so I'll see you then. Peace.